everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to go through some of the settings that you can use to create proxy files in Resolve. Now, this is a bit of a follow-up to the previous tutorial I did about round-tripping uh, from Resolve to Adobe Premiere Pro CS6. And I would recommend watching that tutorial if you haven't yet before you watch this one. But really, that tutorial was just sort of to give you a starting point to work from. I didn't go into settings. I didn't go into you know unsupported media. I didn't go into a lot of areas that you're going to run into. I was just trying to give you a sense of the workflow if you wanted to round trip between Resolve and Adobe Premiere CS6. So in this tutorial, what I want to do is step you through how you can customize your proxy settings, because I received a lot of questions about you know what video files would or would not work as proxies. And the benefit of working with proxies is that you're creating files that have a lower data rate that should work with the speed of your computer. So what you want to do is actually adjust the proxy settings to match what your computer can handle. So in the last tutorial, I just did an easy setup, which was export to Final Cut Pro. Um, but this time, I'm going to create a custom setup. So you can use export to Final Cut Pro as your baseline. But then you can adjust these settings here to match your system. So you know, a QuickTime uncompressed RGB 10-bit proxy is pretty high res. So just for the purpose of illustration here, I obviously can't go through every single combination of codec, but I'm going to create a very, very, very low resolution proxy. So I'm going to start with QuickTime H.264. And then for the resolution, I'm actually going to even knock that down to 640 by 360. Keep the frame rate as 24. I'm going to set the compression quality to least. And then down here, I have a low res proxies folder that I'm going to render to. And I'm going to send it to the, the subfolder, low resolution. And I'm also going to make sure down here that render each clip with a unique file name is unchecked. Now, if I don't want to have to go through and recreate this every time, I can create a new user setup. So I can call this low resolution proxies um, premiere. If I hit save, you'll see now it's in my easy setup list. So when I select that, it will update. Now I have noticed with Resolve 9, sometimes the Render 2 doesn't update, or the codec won't update when you switch between these settings. So when I switch this, it's going to change resolution, but you'll notice it doesn't change the QuickTime codec. Uh, so you have to do that manually. I suspect that has something to do with this being a beta version uh, with Resolve 9. Um, but I'm going to go back to my easy setup, which is a low resolution proxies Premiere. And then I'm going to add the job. I also didn't mention in the previous tutorial, sometimes you have to set the in and out points to make sure you get all the clips. So to do that, you just go to the beginning of the clips, set your in point over here, drag to the end, set your out point over there, and that will grab all of your clips. So if you have been trying to export and it's just been doing one clip, it's because only the first clip is selected. So I'm going to hit Start Render. And you'll see, if you watch the other one, I actually sped up the speed of the clips as it was exporting, so it would be a lot faster. Um, but you'll see that with this, with the lower res proxy, it's actually rendering out a lot quicker. So if your computer is slower, you can save yourself a lot of time by knocking down the quality. And this edit quality is going to be very, very, very low. It's probably lower than you would ever want to use. But I'm just trying to give you a pretty good example of you know, how flexible working with proxies can be. And you really should go in there and figure out the settings for your own system that will work for you. So once that's done, I can go into Premiere. So in Premiere Pro, I've created a low-res timeline just to show you how this round trip process would work. And I'm going to create a new bin to put my clips in. I'm just going to call it low-res. And I'm going to import my low-res clips into this bin. If I just drag and drop these over here to show you what they look like, you'll see that the image quality is very, 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 very low. You also notice if I pull in this window here that the 
file size is very, very, very small. So this is 198K, 200K, 154K, 347K, 324K. So you're really saving a lot of space and a lot of data rate with this uh, proxy setting. So now I'm just going to show you how to relink these proxy files back to Resolve and your high resolution clips just to show you that it does in fact work. So I'm going to go to File, Export, Final Cut Pro XML. And in this folder, let's save that. And then I'm going to go into Resolve and into Conform. I'm going to import my XML file. It's low res round trip. Open that up. And what I'm going to need to do here is choose which timeline to import because I have multiple timelines now. So I'm going to import the low res timeline. I'm going to deselect automatically import source clips into Media Pool. And then I'm going to change my timeline resolution back to full res. And I'm going to say OK. And you'll see it's pulled those clips in. And if I go to color, you'll notice that they're no longer those low resolution proxy files. So if I right click on the clip, I can actually view clip details and double check to make sure it actually is pulling in my original source clip. And I can see there that the format is 2400 by 1350, 16-bit, 24 frames per second. So I know it has found the correct file and the codec is DNG. And close that out. And then if I needed to deliver this in full res back, I could click on deliver. And here again, I would just choose the settings that I wanted to output to for my round trip back to Premiere. So again, I could use Final Cut Pro XML round trip as a base of the template, but I don't have to use all of these settings. And then I can go in and readjust. So it still says QuickTime H.264, but let's update this to QuickTime Uncompressed RGB 10-bit. 1920 by 1080 is good. Frame rate 24 is good. Down here at the bottom, you'll see this render each clip with unique file name is selected. That's from the template. And if I wanted to, I could save this as a template. And just like in the previous tutorial, I simply add the job to the render queue and I start the render.